In Sweden, since 1995, all patients admitted to a coronary care unit are included in a national registry on acute myocardial infarction. During ESC 2010, data on short and long-term survival were presented over a 12-year period from this registry. We can see that over the, the last 15 years, we can see uh, more than a 50% reduction in, in the 30-day mortality. We see great improvement in both the STEM population and in the non-STEM population. This is very encouraging. I think we should continue to work with the quality registries and continue to, to see that the, the guidelines are implemented in, uh, in the reality. The new ESC guidelines on myocardial revascularization have been jointly set up by the ESC and the European Association for Cardiothoracic Surgery. They were jointly presented for the first time in Stockholm by their co-chairs. What is really key about this guideline is that it's about um, treatment strategy more than it is about technique. Technique is important. But instead of asking ourselves the question how, we're trying to address the issue when. Which patients should benefit from which therapy at some point in time? One of the key recommendations of the guideline is that in each center one should have a heart team, whereby the problem of the patient is being discussed by the colleagues and altogether we come up with what we propose as the best solution for his problem. In a lot of situations, the implication is that we think there should be more discussion and more time between, uh, I'm speaking for stable patient, more time between uh, the diagnostic procedure and uh, the intervention, either by PCI or by cabbage. The direction is towards better information, more transparency, more participation of the patient in the decision process. Is it possible to stimulate myocardium by a single erythropoietin injection given during an acute coronary syndrome? This was the objective of the HEB3 trial reported during an ESC 2010 hotline. This prospective multicenter randomized trial included 529 STEMI patients who received, immediately after a successful PCI, either a single shot of erythropoietin or a placebo. The main result, we aimed at, at improving left ventricular ejection fraction. Well, that we did not achieve. There was only a 1% improvement, but it was so small that it didn't reach statistical significance. So basically, it is a neutral study. The in most interesting finding, which was hypothesis generating, uh, at least for us, was that we found a reduction in cardiovascular events. And mainly, if we look at heart failure events, they were reduced in those patients who were receiving erythropoietin. Remote ischemic conditioning taking place in the ambulance before hospital admission could be a future simple and inexpensive procedure to improve outcomes of patients with acute myocardial infarction. We inflate a simple blood pressure cuff to 200 millimeters of mercury for five minutes and then interrupt for five minutes and repeat the method four times and that's all. This conditioning was evaluated in a study in Denmark in which 251 patients with a suspected first MI were randomly assigned to primary PCI alone or primary PCI with remote conditioning. We observed an increase in the myocardial salvage index from 0.55 to 0.75. This is a promising technique that so far has uh, been shown to be feasible, it can be done in the ambulance during transportation to primary PCI. It seems as if it reduces myocardial infarct size, but now we need to clarify whether this translates into clinical benefit for the patients.